Lord God, less than what you have to offer. So we hold our cups up, Lord God. We lift our lives up before you, Lord God. We lift our worship up before you, Lord God. We open up our mouth, Lord God. We ready ourselves for you to fill us, Lord God, and to fill us to the overflow, Lord God. We ready, rid, rid ourselves of the cares of this life, Lord God. We rid ourselves of the emotional baggage that tried to follow us to the altar. God, we erect an altar right where we are in our own heart, and we lift it up before you, God, and say, I climb upon this thing on today. Live in my heart, our God. So, God, we bless you. We honor you, and we do praise your name. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, let your praise rise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let God arise and our enemies be scattered. Come on, let your praise rise and our enemies will be scattered on this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. I need a little more value. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can we get some more volume? We bless your name, oh God, yeah. Hallelujah. We command our souls to give a praise. We command our souls to bless his name. Hallelujah. I command my soul to give him praise. 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 I command my hands to bless the Lord. 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 I command my feet to leap for joy. 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 I command my feet.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody put your hands together. Come on, somebody put your hands together and release praise in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many believe that there will be glory after this? I don't know what your situation is, your circumstances, your trial may be, but come on, I need you to make a declaration that there will be glory after this.
somebody release a sound in the room. Hallelujah. He'll move in your praise if you bless him. Hallelujah. He'll move in your worship if you give him glory. Hallelujah. We honor your name. Father, we call you Yahweh. Father, we call you Adonai. Hallelujah. Father, you're sovereign and you're supreme. Come on, worship us. Hallelujah. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that you'll abide in this place. Father, we ask that the vibration of your glory will meet us in this atmosphere. Father, we declare that you are holy. We declare that you are righteous. Come on, Zion, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. You are the risen king. Hallelujah. You are the sovereign one. Father, you are our keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You kept our mind. Hallelujah. You kept us from falling. Now unto him who is able. Come on. Come on, worshipers. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Don't wait for a song, but come on. I dare you to make a dent in this atmosphere. Come on. I dare you to make your presence known in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Savior, be lifted high. Savior, be lifted high. Come on, I can't hear the worship, but Savior, be lifted high. Hallelujah, it's just you and Jesus. Come on, Savior, be lifted high. Hallelujah, Father, we just want you. We just want you this morning. Hallelujah, we lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh, we lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh, we lift you high. Yahweh. with me. We lift you high, we say Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you raise that up. We lift you high. You are Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we call you Adonai. Yahweh, Yahweh. Your Yahweh, Yahweh, your El Shaddai, Yahweh, Yahweh, we lift you You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You reveal 
yourself as Yahweh. You reveal yourself as Adonai. You reveal yourself as El Shaddai. We lift you. We lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you. Hallelujah. God was ministering to this to me this morning. I was ministering back to God. And he was talking about the worship. That if there's ever a time that we've got to worship our God, now is the time. He's, he seeks a pure worship. Those that don't know how to worship, they're going to struggle in this season. But for those of you who know that you can't help but get delivered in his presence, it's going to come easy for you to lift your hands. Even with a mask on your mouth, God can still hear your worship. Oh, glory to God. So, Father, we worship you on this morning, God, in the beauty of your holiness. You are an amazing God, and you seek for those that will worship you. So, Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for the freedom in worship. We thank you, Lord God, for the joy in worship. We thank you for the manifestation that takes place when we worship you. For you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. There is none like you, O oh God, for you are omnipotent. Oh, God, you're everywhere all at the same time. And, Father, you're touching every circumstance and situation, Father, that, we, that deals with us right now. When we open up our mouth and worship you, God, hallelujah, you step in, God, and we thank you that heavens, Lord, heavens, Lord, God, backs us, oh, God. So, Father, right now we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, I will worship you if I didn't have any music because, God, you've been just that good to me. Oh, hallelujah. When it seems like the world is going to hell in a handbasket, God, there is a remnant of people, Lord God, that will worship you in the midst of every perplexing circumstance and situation. And, God, we are part of that, that remnant. So, God, we worship you. We bless your name, oh, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I pray, Father, that your sons and daughters that are listening online find themselves captivated in your worship. They find themselves prostrate before you, bent over, Lord God, saying, God, come and rule and reign supreme in my life, oh God, because I need you, Father. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Oh, God, your worship is intoxicating. Oh, God, bless you. Bless you, God. 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 Just bless you, God. Hey, God, thank you. Thank you, God, for your manifested presence. Occupy this space, oh God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 
Oh, glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you. We put our hands together and we bless you. Come on, people of God. Bless your God. Bless, bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Put your hands together and bless him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're an amazing God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Do we have our declaration? Are we able to do that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. You just have to exit because I tell you, God, like, you can, worshipers can stay and worship all day. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. I'm not sure we can do the declaration, but come on, y'all put your hands together and bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, somebody, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He alone is still worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Rick for a powerful word on Wednesday. We are so blessed. We are so blessed to have, to have pastors and ministers that will stand in our stead in our absence. And, um, and I'm grateful and thankful uh, for her 24 years of, of commitment and support and love and I'll continue to tell her this that the best is yet to come and for all of y'all these signs shall follow them that believe so you got to you got to believe that you got to believe that amen I'm gonna try my best to give you guys um uh, some of the things in which God has given me uh, to minister. Um, I've been working on this particular message uh, ever since last Sunday night. And, um, you know, even, even, even in preparation, you don't know how it's going to turn out. And so for me as a, as a pastor, as a leader, my only desire is, is for God to be glorified. Let me, let me see if I can say it again. My, my, my desire is not to try to impress you uh, because I've been doing this too long now um, to try to impress people. Uh, there's a lot of ministers and pastors and, and, and people that started out with me that are no longer with me. What I mean by that, I mean they're no longer pastoring and some of them no, are no longer following God. But I made a decision to follow God if it cost me my life. Yeah, I've made I'm, I've made that decision to follow him if it costs me my life. Can anybody say amen? amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a drive by. Um, uh, I try my best to be out of here by 11, 11, 15. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that. Praise God, because I believe that some of us, our attention span, uh, we can't go beyond 45 minutes of sitting in and reading and studying and listening and paying attention. And so uh, I'm going to stay, stay right, at, right in that. Uh, I, I don't understand how people can stay in church all day. Um, but uh, I don't understand that, you know. But, but how be ever, you know. The Bible says judge not another man's servant, so I'm not going to judge another man's servant. You'll find me reading in, in John, um, John the, the fifth chapter. And um, I'm going to be reading John the fifth chapter. And I don't know if, I don't know if the people in the back has it. But uh, John, the fifth chapter, eight through the 15th verse, John, the fifth chapter, eight to the 15th verse. And then we'll go uh, to John five and four, John, the fifth chapter, eight through the 15th verse. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to have on our screen. Uh, prayerfully, we'll be, be able to read it together. Um, she said, no, we're working. OK. All right. The Bible says in John, uh, the fifth chapter, eight. Through the 15th verse, the Bible says, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. 
And that day was the Sabbath. The Jewish or the Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. Now I'm going to add a word on the Sabbath. Can anybody say amen? amen. But I was pretty good. Uh, the, the 11th verse says, he answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. For the verse says, then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk on the Sabbath? But the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn, and the Bible goes on to say, a multitude being in that place. 14th verse says, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you have been made well. Say no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Final verse is the 15th verse. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Now I'm going to John, the, 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 the fifth chapter, and the fourth verse. The Bible says in the fourth verse, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well whatever disease he held or had. I want to teach from the, from the subject for the next uh, 40 minutes, if you give me that. I want to teach from the subject, the Lord had me hidden for such a time as this. The Lord had me hidden for such a time. Can somebody, can somebody give God a wave offering before I pray? The Lord had me hidden for such a time as this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask my minister if she would. Don't, don't, you know, you, sometimes you just zone out. I need you to zone in. I need you, I need you on this morning. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us this moment to come before you once again. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would strengthen us now. Even as the word of the Lord goes forth, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would anoint us afresh. God, I pray right now, Father God, that you would push back the forces of darkness. Even as we serve the devil, notice that you have no power in this service, on this ministry, on the lives of God's people. For the Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he may destroy the works of the devil. And on this morning, your works are destroyed. God, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a receptive heart. We bless you. We honor you. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody that have faith say amen. amen. Do me a favor. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Give him some praise. The Lord had me hidden for such a time as this. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I believe that we're in a season where God is about to reveal himself. I believe that God is going to reveal himself in such a way that the things that were hidden in 2020 will be revealed in 2021. And I said this, and I think I'll say it again. Some of you, God spoke to you in 2020, but you weren't able to enjoy what God said that was yours. And so what God did, God had to conceal it. God had to hide it in order for this season to come upon us so that we can enjoy the thing in which God spoke to us in 2020. We are going to be able to enjoy it in 2021. I still believe that this is, I still believe that this is our season. And I still believe that this is our moment. I believe that. I believe that. So the Bible says in John 5 and 4, the Bible says, the Bible says, and the angel went down at a certain time. Now, understand when you talk about John, the fifth chapter, you, you, you're talking about you're talking about the pool of Bethesda. And the Bible talks about as it relates to the pool of Bethesda, the Bible talks about the pool of Bethesda having five porches. And what it was, it was basically a hospital for the sick people. Can anybody say man? It kind of reminded me of the church back in the old days. The church was a hospital for the sick people. Let me go and just get a little deeper. You need to understand, even though the church is a, is, is a hospital for the sick people, you don't need to be sick all of your life. Y'all going to get quiet on that one. But uh, you, 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 
And so, and so, and so the pool of Bethesda had five porches and, and the five porches, you'd understand it was five tiers. And so it was filled with sick people. And the Bible says that Jesus walked into the hospital and he stepped over all the sick people and he found one man that was sick for 38 years. One man out of all of these people, it could have been hundreds of people. It could have been tens of people. It could have been thousands of people. But what God did, what Jesus did, Jesus visited the hospital. Come on, somebody, and stepped over all the sick people and came to this one person. I'm asking God that no matter who house you walk by, please don't walk by mine. Oh, y'all getting quiet. That's all right. That's all right. I'm not trying to be selfish, but, but I don't care who you step over. Just don't step over me. I, I don't care whose name hasn't been called. God, please call my name. Y'all got to get this. Y'all got to get this. And so out of all the people, the Bible says that, that, that Christ went to one man, one person, one individual. Why? Because you've got to understand. You've got to understand that the reason why certain people are not healed in this season is because God knows exactly what they're going to do with the healing. Uh, uh, okay, let me, let me push this thing. I promise you, I'm pregnant on this morning, and I'm going to deliver this baby. You're not going to leave until you see the face of this baby. Can anybody say amen? amen? And so Jesus stepped over all the people, and he found this one man that was sick, that was lame for 36, 38 years. He was lame. And the Bible says this. The Bible says that Jesus stooped down, and he said this. He said, he said, will thou be made whole? You got to get this. He said, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? Now, so for some of you, you need to understand, even as you understand the scriptures, you need to understand there's a reason why uh, Christ asked him that, because you need to understand the reason why Christ asked him that, because Christ needed to hear you say, I want to be whole. See, see, if you've ever been, been a part of NA and AA, the first thing you've got to do is confess you've got a problem. Uh, you've got to admit that i got a problem. I, I'm a drug addict. I'm a crackhead. Come on. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a womanizer. I'm a hoe. Come on, somebody. You've got to admit that you've got a problem. And so, and so Christ needs to hear him say, I want to be made whole. And so when you look at this particular text, when Jesus said, will thou be made whole? You got to remember what he said. He said, of course, I want to be made whole. But he said this. He said around a certain time, around a certain time, the angel, angel come and it stirs up the water. And, and before I can crawl my way in, roll my way in, somebody else jumps in before me and they get my blessing. Or they get what I've been looking for. Can anybody say amen? But I found out, I found out before you become envious of someone driving a car that you admire, remember God has more than one car. Oh, y'all got quiet again. So instead of you saying, that's my car, no, that's not your car. You, you're not paying for that car. You're not, you're not making the payments on that car. You didn't have a down payment for that car. But, but just because somebody's driving a car that you like don't necessarily mean that God only made one of them. Can anybody say amen? So I just believe that, that just because somebody jumped in, in front of you or rolled ahead of you don't necessarily mean that God is not going to heal you. Because I found out that God knows exactly where we live. God has my address. Can anybody say amen? Okay, okay, okay. Let me see if I can... And so the Bible says, says, the Bible says in John 5 and 4, sit down, the Bible says in, in John 5 and 4, the Bible says, for an angel went down a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever steps in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, we've been talking about this, uh, Stacy, for a long time, and I think I need to talk about this because there are two Greek words uh, for time. One of them is chronos, and the other one is, is keros. And we want to talk about this because you got you to understand how God operates. And oftentimes, the reason why we find ourselves behind the timing of, of God is because we don't know how God operates. But when an individual knows how God operates, then what they can be, they can be in sync with God. Uh, uh, look at somebody say, I want to be in sync with God. I don't want to. And see, and see, you got to understand that when you, when you become in sync with God, you might be out of step with other people. In other words, I am not trying to please everybody. I'm trying to please God. And so when I'm trying to please God, that means some of y'all may not like me because I'm trying to please God. Look at somebody say, I'm on my way pleasing God. I'm on my way, please God. Uh, you got to get that. You got to get that. So, so there's two words. There's two Greek words for 
for time. One of them is, is, is Kronos and the other one is, is Kairos. Now, now Kronos has to do with, with the chronolog chronological time, the, the clock time, the time by which we, we keep uh, uh, daily appointments. But Kairos has to do with special time. Mm. A special moment in time. It is a special moment in time when God chooses to visit his people. The Bible says, has God forget, for, forsaken his people? The Apostle Paul said, no, he has not forsaken his people. And so there is an appointed time when God is going to visit his people. There's a, there's a special time when God shows up and show out. See, I just need God to show up because I know that God, when he shows up, he's going to show out. The Bible says, the Bible says, it's the Bible says in, in first, first Chronicles 12 and, and 32, the Bible says the sons of Issachar understood the times. And oftentimes, even as believers, we don't understand the times. And I've been trying to teach all this for years, that, that, that every time or every season isn't a season uh, to spend money. It, it might be a season to sow. Uh, it might be a season, come on somebody, to walk in forgiveness. And so a lot of times, we are not like the sons of Issachar that understand the times. Uh, what's so amazing about God, he isn't governed by time, but he lives in eternity. And I am so grateful and so thankful that God lives, come on somebody, he lives on the outside rim of time. He lives in eternity. And what that means, that means that he lives in eternity and he can manipulate things in time. Come on, because if Joshua was here, Joshua would be able to tell you that he was able to make, make the, the, the clock stand still. The sun was able to stand still. Why? Because God is not governed by time, but God can address time in your life. That's why some of y'all, some of y'all know that the, the, the bill collector said that you had to have some money at a certain time. Oh, come on, somebody. But what God did, God allowed you to find favor. Why? Because God is not governed by time. I wish I had some real saints up in this saint. Oh, y'all looking crazy again, but that's all right. Everything is subject to time except God. Everything is, is subject to time. Except God, I'm gonna get in trouble about what I'm about to say. But but some of y'all, some of y'all older women, you used to be young, and come on, you know the thing was all perky and y'all was looking all good, praise God. But 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 now as men, you know, even as as our chest, you know, I had a little chest when I was growing up. Now now I have chest to draw to disease. That that means gravity is taking over. That means, I, listen, I cannot outrun time. Oh, but everybody is subject to time, even your body, except God. Can anybody shout glory? This is how we know that all things are working together for the good because I know who's in control. When an individual knows, come on, Mary, when an individual knows who's in control, then, then they know that it's going to work out for their good. Oh, come on, somebody. I didn't say it's going to feel good, but I say it's working out for my good. Oh, come on, somebody. I got a praise right there. I got a praise right there. It's working out for my good. It's working out for my good. And so God is not, not governed by, by, by time. Uh, but, but understanding, understand this. When you talk about Kairos and, and Kronos, you need to understand the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9, and let us not grow weary while doing good for in my season you got to get that in due season come on somebody somebody yell my season my season in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart I don't know about you, but saints of God, we need to stop getting weary and well-doing. We need to stop fainting on the job. We need to understand that some of us got so much seed in the ground, we just don't know when that seed is going to produce and harvest. I, I, I've sown what I didn't have to sow. Come on, somebody. I've given what I didn't have to give. I love when other people was hating on me. And so I know that I got enough seed in the ground to know that this too shall pass. I wish I had some real saints up in this place that understand I'm going through struggles right now but this too shall pass I got pain in my back but this too shall pass uh, 
So, somebody shout in the right time. I'm going to get mine. See, see, I'm going to get mine. I, I don't have to manipulate. I'm going to get mine. I, I don't have to lie, cheat, and steal. I'm going to get mine. Because there's a blessing with my name on it. Can anybody shout glory? So in the right time, Jesus asked, asked the man, do you want to be made well? As long as I've been sitting by this pool waiting on the angel to stir the water, yes, I want to be made well. Look at, someone, look at somebody and say, this is personal. Because one of the things I found out, you got to get this, I promise you, because I've been hearing my message everywhere. You, you got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this. Touch somebody say, look at somebody say, you got to get this. It's, it's personal. One of the things I found out, I found out that everybody don't want to be healed. Be, because I can, as long as, as long as you know that I'm sick, I can play the sympathy card. Oh, y'all getting quiet. Okay. I, I need somebody to have pity on me. So as long as you know I'm sick, you will have pity on me. And so I found out just because Jesus passed by your house don't necessarily mean that you want to be healed. And so you, it has to become personal. You've got to say, God, I want to be healed. God, I want to be delivered. God, I want to be set free. God, I believe that this is my time. Can anybody shout glory? Jesus sat down. Jesus saw hurting people in need of comfort, troubled people in need of peace, sick people in need of healings. Again, Jesus saw hurting people in need of comfort, troubled people in need of peace, sick people in need of healing. He was a man who was, was, was for, for, for 38 years had been unable to walk, a burden to others, and probably, and probably with, with little sense of self-worth. So the Bible says here in John 5 and 8, the Bible says, and Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed, and I'm putting this word on the Sabbath. They were more, more concerned with, 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 with the laws and their tradition than they were with a man being healed. People that, that, that should be concerned about your healing is more concerned with the opinions of other people about you. People that, that, that should be concerned about your healing, they're more concerned about other people's opinions about you. That, that's why you got to get this because the Bible says if you still brother overtake it in the fall, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, consider yourself, let you, come on somebody, let you be tempted. And so oftentimes people should be concerned about your healing, but they're more concerned about other people's opinion about you, what you got to say, what you, and, and some of y'all, some of y'all don't even know it, praise God, but you are participating in gossip. Okay, let me, I, I, I promise you I'm going to get back to this, but I felt the Holy Ghost just, just do a drive-by on my spirit, praise God. You say, well, Pastor, I didn't say nothing, but you're ear hustling. You want to know the latest gossip about the last church on the corner. You want to hear the latest gossip about the pastor leaving his wife or the wife leaving up. You want to hear the latest gossip. Gossip. The devil lives a lie. I don't want to hear the latest gossip. Whenever somebody tell me something about somebody, I say, pray for that person. Come on, somebody. You you got to stop talking about that person and you got to start praying for that person because you got to understand the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man a righteous woman it avails much can anybody shout glory now, now watch this watch this because as long as I was on my bed I was invisible You didn't see me, Alan, as long as I was on, on that bed. I was invisible as long as I was on that, that, that bed. But the moment I start carrying what I was a prisoner to, now you recognize me. As long as that bed was, was carrying me, I was invisible. But now that I'm, I'm carrying what I've been a prisoner to all these years... Now you recognize me. Mm. 
you got to understand that sometimes people don't see you when you are broke. People don't see you when you're sick. People don't see you when you're dis in despair and destitute. But the moment you get on your feet, come on, somebody. Now, the reason why they don't see you when you're broke and destitute and sick is because you can't add anything to their life. But the moment you get well, praise God, you can add something to their life. And so just as long as I was sick, Come on, somebody. Just as long as I was lame, I was invisible. But the moment God raised me up, just as long as I ain't have no money, I was invisible. But time God put money in my bank account, and I'm looking a little better, praise God. Come on, somebody. Now you see me. And that's why I always encourage y'all that when somebody leaves you, you make sure you don't look like you did when they left you. Because they left you crying. Come on, somebody. They left you crying. Come on, your mascara was running. Come on, you want to commit suicide. You want to give up and quit on life. But somehow, in some way, you regain your composure. and You regain your, your strength. Now, all of a sudden, you start looking in the mirror and you feel good about yourself. I found out that 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 every every departure isn't a bad departure. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody! Every departure is not a bad departure. Some departures is from God. God said, "I've got to move him out the way. I've got to move her out the way because if I don't move them out the way, the Bible says over there in Isaiah the sixth chapter, the Bible says that when King Uzziah died, then I was able to see God. So there are some things that had to be moved out the way. Oh, I'm trying my best to maintain my self sit down, sit down, sit down, let me finish this. Sit down. I'm almost finished. But I need to touch something. I need to touch something because uh because because everyone knows what exposure means. But exposure means different things to different people. Some of us believe that if we can, can be seen by the right person or the right people, we will get the notoriety that we want. Sometimes God doesn't give you the exposure you desire. And I, I, I'm going to give you something that's going to bless your life. Praise God. Watch this. Watch this. I, I get this particular message because I have been worrying with this message ever since Sunday night. And, and, and I've, been, I've been reading, I've been reading Exodus, the 30, 30, 33rd chapter, and the 18th to the 23rd verse. And when the Bible says this, the Bible says that, that it was Moses that said, show me your glory. Since I found favor with you and because you love me so much, show me your glory. And the Bible says this, the Bible says God said that no one can, can see my face and live. And so the Bible says this, the Bible says that what I'll do is I, I'll put you in the cliff of a rock. You got to get this now. And he, did, he didn't only say, but I, I'll, I'll put you in the cliff of the rock. But watch this, mama. He said, I'll put my hand over you. Now, this is powerful. What was he saying? He was saying, I'll, I'll, he's, he, he, went, he went and used a New, New Testament scripture. If any man be in Christ, he said, I'm going to put you in the rock. Uh, you, you, see, see, you got y'all get y'all missed that. I'm gonna put you in the rock. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in the rock where you're 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 protected, where you're safe. Come on, somebody. All of us need to understand that God done put us in a rock. Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is stick and standing. So He said, "I'm gonna put you in a rock." Y'all got to get that. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in a, in, a, in a cliff of a rock, and I'm gonna put my hand over you. So so when 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 I walk by, the only thing you'll be able to see is my hind part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Now, why is this so important? You, you got to get this. Why is this so important? Because you've got to understand all of y'all that say, I want more of you, God. And, and, and you got to realize that God will only give you as much as you can handle of him. Because if you see all of God, mama, your brain will fry. Your eyes will pop out of sockets. Y'all got to get this. Y'all looking crazy, but I'm trying to tell you about God. Your eyes will pop, I literally pop out of his sockets and your brain will fry if you see all of God. Even the angel of the Lord over there in, in Isaiah 6 chapter, even the angel of the Lord, the Bible says, they had six wings. The Bible says, and with two wings, they covered their faces. And with two wings, they covered their feet. Come on, somebody. Why? Because the ground in which they were standing on was a holy ground. And with two wings, they did fly. Can anybody shout glory? Oh, 
So the Bible says, says the Bible says, I'm going, I'm going to put you in, 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 in the cliff of the rock. I'm going to New Testament saints. I'm going to put you in Christ. I'm going to put you in my son. My son will, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but, but come on somebody, but shall have everlasting life. So I'm going to put you in my son. I'm going to put you in the cliff of the rock. And, and when, I, when I pass by, you'll be able to see my hindsight. Now, now watch this. The reason why I know, the reason why I know that if you really see all of God, your brain will fly, you fry, your eyes will pop out of your sockets, praise God. It's because even the hindsight calls, calls Moses' face to light up. Because, because when God, on the, 30, the 31st, 12th chapter, God started talking to him about the laws and, and started talking about, about the tablets. Come on, somebody. And then he had the tablets coming down the mountain. And the Bible says his face was radiant. Come on, somebody. His face was so radiant from being in the presence of the Lord that the people thought it was a ghost. They start running because Moses was coming down the mountain from being in the presence of the Lord. And people thought it was a ghost. Y'all got to get this. That's why a lot of you have never really had an encounter with God because if you really had an encounter with God it would change you that's why some of y'all don't know what true worship is because when true worship really enters into a room you got to remember that the cares of this world is forced to fall off your life The cares of this world will be forced to fall off your life. If, if you get into some real worship, you're not, you're not stuck about that boyfriend, that girlfriend, that husband, that wife. You're not concerned about the financial woes, but you get into some true, into some true worship. Praise God, because the Bible says that God is searching for them that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So when you get into some real worship, stuff starts just falling out. Anger start falling off. <laughs> Bitterness start falling off. Unforgiveness start falling. Why? Because you had an encounter with God, and what God does, God addressed the issues in your life. Can anybody shout glory? I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Sit down, sit down. Sit, sit down, sit down. So, so God said, God says, God says, rise, take up your bed and walk. Why? Because a bed is meant for lying and not living. Bed is meant for lying, not living. That's why when, when, when someone is sick, praise God, and they, they lay there for a long period of time, they got to be rolled and, and they got to be anointed with some kind of, of oil, praise God. Why? Because you get bed souls. Why? Because a bed is not meant for living. Uh, come on, it's not, it wasn't meant for living, but it was meant for lying. And I don't know about you, but I, but I get up every morning by the grace of God. Uh, come on, somebody, after I've spent a couple of hours in the bed. I don't live in the bed, but I just lie in the bed. And so he said, take up your bed and walk rise take up your bed and walk why because his bed is not made for living but this bed is made for lying <laughs> let me let me finish this let me finish this up. Even the four lepers said, why should we sit here and die? So the Bible says in the 11th verse, the Bible says, and, and, and he answered them and said, and, and he answered them, uh, he who made me well said to me, take up my bed and walk. Why, 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 is, he, why, is, he, why is he carrying his bed? Now, the one reason why he's carrying his bed is because, is because Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. But the other reason, and this is for, for some of you right, right here that's in this sanctuary and you that are viewing live. The other, other reason he told him to carry his bed because somebody else may need it. Oh. 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 
In other words, some, you, you, you might, you might I, I'm carrying what used to carry me. You, you might need this. And, and maybe if you lay in it, praise God, the same anointing that healed me, the same anointing that delivered me might be still in the fiber of this bed and and you might lay in this bed and all of a sudden you find yourself getting up and moving parts of your body that you weren't able to move praise god now all of a sudden you you on your feet and you giving god some praise because he said this he said pick up your bed and walk and the reason why he was carrying that bed is because somebody else might need what had to carry him for 38 years finish this up well it's just i gotta finish up Bible says, the Bible said down, Bible says in, in the 12th verse, Bible says, then, then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who, who was, was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a multitude being in that place. Now watch this, a lame man didn't know who Jesus was. Mm. He, he just knew somebody bent down and, and asked him, Did you, do you really want to be healed? Then all of a sudden, he, the, the man that, that stooped down and said, you want to be healed, just said, rise, take up your bed and walk. But he didn't know who Jesus was. Why? Because he was in the hospital. Oh, y'all got to get. This was, this was Jesus' first visit to the hospital. So he was in a hospital. He didn't hear about Jesus. And so he didn't know who Jesus was. And so the 14th verse says, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Now watch this now. He hides you in the cliff of the rock to expose himself to you so that when he exposes you to people, you will never forget him exposing himself to you. Oh, y'all, you see, 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 see. So some of y'all need to understand that there's a reason why God is hiding you for such a time as this. And the reason why he's hiding you for such a time as this, he's filling you with his glory. So that when he exposed y'all to other people, you won't forget him exposing you to himself. That's why some people are not, are not visible right now. It's because they're filled with pride. And so God said, I've got to address the pride in your life. And, and that's why on last Wednesday, I talked about going to the potter's house. And, and on the wheel, there was, there was clay on the wheel. And the Bible says that, that the potter began to make something on the wheel as it pleased him. That means that you're not ready yet. Look at somebody say, baby, you're not ready yet. But I believe that there's about 20% of you, God has hidden you for such a time as this. You need to understand that God will not give you the exposure that, that you desire until you are ready. Can anybody say amen? Come on, somebody. He's not going to give you the exposure that you think you should have until you are filled with his glory. Can anybody say amen? You got to get this because all of you need to understand that God don't want you to forget about him when God exposes you to other people. And sometimes we'll forget about God when God starts exposing us. Uh, come on, somebody. Now we're, 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 we're in a board meeting and we're talking to a CEO and we're talking to very influential people, praise God, that can push the buttons or make decisions or speak a word, praise God, and change the climate over your life. Uh, and so God said, I can't, I can't allow you to get into the boardroom right now until you first come into my boardroom. Uh, and I start addressing uh, idiosyncrasies in your life, uh, low self-worth in your life insecurities in your life some of you will never leave god board room until you allow god to address things in your life i know i'm going fast son but anyone anyone in this church understands that god has your best interest god knows what's best for you and sometimes even as children children don't understand that a good parent won't what's best for them won't what's best for her won't what's best for him and so a lot of times the children think that the parents don't want them to have fun girls just want to have fun no baby the fun in which you're trying to have will cause your life to self-destruct the fun in which you want to have may cause you to die prematurely so what God has to do God has to hold you back and God has to draw you to himself that's why you got to have a dream and a vision you got to understand that a dream does not drive you but a dream huh, draws you. Huh. Can anybody shout glory? 
I'm almost finished. Uh, watch this. You can tell how big a person is by what it takes uh, to, to discourage them. Some of y'all, come on somebody. Some of y'all, it's hard to be big when little got y'all. Some of y'all need to understand. In my closing, I wish I had some real saints. In my closing, some of y'all will allow life itself to discourage you. But the devil lives a lie. God has been too good to me for me allow my praise and my harps to hang up on the willow tree and refuse to sing a song in a foreign land the devil lives a lie because I found out that some people will stay in a lot longer than they should but as for me and my house we're gonna serve the Lord and as we serve the Lord there'll be an expiration date that I've got to come out better than I can win in. Can anybody shout glory? If your praise, if your praise and your prayer and your worship isn't deeper than before you went in, then you're going to stay in. But I found out a long time ago that my praise shields the enemy. What does that mean? That means that I praise God. The Bible says that the enemy will be suspended in midair. What he wanted to do to me, he can't do it because I'm giving God a sacrificial praise. Can somebody, can anybody shout glory? I double down 20 people to step out of the desert, step out of their wilderness, and step into God's greater call. Listen, somebody's a neighbor. I'm about to step into my Jordan. What's after my Jordan? My promise. What's after my Jordan? The things in which God promised me. What's after my Jordan? Kairos. 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 What is Kairos? Kairos is what God spoke to Moses in the desert by a burning bush. He said, go into Egypt and get my people. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go right now. But the Bible says that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Oh! 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 God hardened the heart of Pharaoh and Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people go. So the Bible says that God sent a death angel. Look at his neighbor. I got the blood over my doorpost. The death angel gotta come by. Can anybody shout glory? Come on, somebody. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. This is a Kairos moment. What God promised Moses. He told Moses, I'm taking you to a land that's flowing with milk and honey and honey. Come on, somebody. God has taken us uh, to a place uh, that's flowing uh, with milk uh, and honey. Uh, can anybody uh, shout glory? Come on, somebody. For the next 30 seconds. I double dog now to praise us, to give God, uh, come on, give him a shout, uh, give him a dance, mock him, uh, 
praise him. Praise him like your life depended on it. Praise him like he's about to visit your house and touch your children. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Lord had me hidden for such a time as this. One of my wife's childhood friends visited us on, on New Year's Eve. And we, we, we've been hearing this a lot. And what we've been hearing is, oh, I didn't know y'all was there. I didn't know that was a church. When you say the name New Birth Worship Center, people say, who is that? What's that? Is that a new work? Is that a new ministry? But I believe that, 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 that for 24 years, what God did, God had his hands. And he had us in the cliff of a rock. So that when God moves his hand, the people of this city will see the glory of God. On this ministry the power and the presence of God on this ministry and so I believe that God had me hidden God had us hidden for such a time as this I believe that I believe that this this is a season of exposure I thought I thought and this is no exaggeration I'm not trying to give you my resume but I thought that when I preached in in Jacksonville many years ago 5,000 seat auditorium Potter's house in Jacksonville I thought that that would give me the give the ministry the notoriety and the and the visibility and exposure in which we in which we so desperately wanted. But even after then, after preaching there, and ministering there, thousands of people, God still had had me hid, hidden. God says, "Son, I have you hidden because you're not ready for what I'm about to expose you to." I thought many years ago when I when I preached at the Ocean Center, I thought that that would give me the exposure. God said, "You're not ready, son." I thought when we when we went to Hang City a couple of years ago, the big ministry in Hang City, I thought that would give us the exposure. Praise and worship was dynamic. The word of God was was powerful. God said, "You're not ready." And sometimes people fail to understand it's not a it's not a sin issue. Because if, if it's a sin issue, then, then, then why would he allow Abraham to wait 25 years before the manifestation of what he promised him at 75 years old? But throughout, throughout Abraham's life, God needed to know that Abraham will follow him without reservations. All you willing to follow him without explanation. 
See, see, God don't have to explain everything to us. When he say go, just go. My wife and I, we are, we are literally ministering to so many people outside of this state and, and down south. Just ministering. Throwing our blanket. Influence. How did y'all do it? 34 years of marriage. 24 years of ministry. How did y'all do it without quitting sons and daughters walking away and lying on you and scandalizing your name and, and instead of us attacking them, we blessed them. So God is doing it. So new birth, I want y'all to do like Bishop T.D. Jake say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Now double dog there, somebody say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on and give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Father, bless your people. Strengthen your people. Thank you for touching Mary's body. Thank you, Father, for bringing her back to us. I'm asking God to touch James, touch Brenda, touch all the people that may be experiencing some type of ailment. Touch them now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's time now. It's time for us to give now. There's a, at the, at the bottom of the screen, there's a, there's a cash app. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, there's a cash app um, at the bottom of the screen. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, if you want to be a blessing to me, my cash app is, is, is cash or dollar sign, capital P, capital L, Hick. P.L. Hick, capital P, capital L, Hick. I know mine, praise God. I know mine. I know mine, praise the Lord. I mean, I know the churches, but I know mine. Amen. I pray that you guys were tremendously blessed by the, by the teaching of the word. I pray that each and every one of you uh, would share this video and tag somebody in it because I believe that God spoke uh, into this house. Y'all do my favor, bless God, if you would, please. Somebody, somebody give a... Uh